Hey Defenders, welcome back. So in the few, few previous videos, we've installed Clam AV. We have configured our Clam on access scanning so that we can detect malicious files and potentially remove malicious files within real time. And now let's configure our Wazoo agent and our Wazoo manager to, to be able to alert us when Clam AV has found a malicious file on one of our endpoints. So stick around and we'll jump into it. And all right, so I have my Wazoo agent uh, installed on our endpoint that is running our Clam AV. So if we go into, and, and if you guys remember in the previous videos, our Clam AV messages output to our var log messages uh, because we had them configured for a syslog. Um, so if we look here, um, we can see our Clam AV message is outputted here. And by default, this is actually already a file that the Wazoo agent sends automatic uh, sends by default for us. So, uh, but just to just to double confirm that, if we go into our osec.conf and scroll all the way to the bottom here, we'll see that our var log messages file is configured by default to be forwarded by the Wazoo agent. So we really don't need to do anything. And also, Wazoo has created Clam AV rules already to trigger by default. Um, which is nice. One rule of thumb uh, to be cautious about, uh, you could install this or y you could set this up and then r realize that, hey, I'm not getting my alerts like I should. Um, one thing to be cautious about is, so if we see our program name is, is ClamD. However, if, you're, if you've started Clam AV with a different user, um, with a different user and you see that this value is different you'll need to change the wazoo decoder so that it's able to pick that up so and you can do that by jumping on your wazoo manager so if i get on to my wazoo manager here and i open up the var osec rule set decoders in 0075 you'll see our clam av decoders file here and so if i enter into that you see what it's matching on it's matching on the program name of clam d which when we look at our output within our messages file we see that that value is the same so if this value is something different uh, just make sure that you change the decoder to match that or else the clam av rules won't trigger as you may have expected them to but I don't need to make those changes. By default, we all look good. So now let's get Clam AV started up and the, get the on access scanning started up and let's detect some alerts. So let me start tailing the var log messages so we can see uh, these events come in real time here. And I'll go ahead and start Clam D up to start the daemon. And I'll also start, once this starts up, I'll, I'll start up the on access scanning as well. So once we download, and again, if you watched the previous video, once we download a file, Clam AV will assess it automatically for us. So if you haven't checked that out, uh, go ahead and check that out. And I'll link it in the top right right now. And so I'll start the Clam NACC. And I've already configured that to watch my ops directory. So now, if we just do, actually, I think I still already have it. Yeah, okay, let me blow these two away real quick. We'll do a wget, so let's go ahead and grab this guy, and then let's unzip it, so that clam AV will now assess it. And clam AV has, has detected it for us automatically, so that looks good, so now, we should now have this alert within Wazoo. So if we go into our security events here, and if we if we go into our events tab, uh, here we go. We, we see virus clam AV virus detected. And if we parse this guy out, we see the full entry for it here. So we see our win adware, which matches exactly what we have uh, what we have here.
So that looks good. So that looks good. Uh, that's perfect. And now we can, you know, using Elastilert or using a webhook, which we've done in some previous videos, we could now forward these to our uh, to the Hive, which is our SOC tool, or send an email out to our InfoSec team and say, hey, we have detected malware. And now, uh, and say, hey, ClamAV has detected malware on this endpoint. And now all this is automated for us now. We're not having to go in and do manual scans. Um, and this even applies if we run, and this even applies for the Clam on, uh, on access scanning if we remove files as well. If we use Clam AV to auto remove files or auto quarantine files as well. So if I do a uh, PSOX grant uh, grep for the Clam and ACC daemon, and let's go ahead and stop that, and we'll restart it, but we'll add our flag to auto remove files. So if I do dash dash remove, now that that's started up, we let me remove I'll remove that previous file and so now let's extract that file again and clam AV should now remove that file from the box because that's what we're telling it to do with the remove flag. And so clam AV has found it. We get that output here and it has been removed. And if we refresh our wazoo, our wazoo panel here, we see that the alert has come in again, um, which is good. So, and so as I mentioned in the last video, uh, it can be dangerous to auto remove files just because false positives do happen, and you don't want Clam AV to trigger on a file that is required by software that's on the box and to auto remove it. So what you can also do, like how we touched on on the previous video, is to move it to a quarantined directory. Um, so when you see a wazoo alert come in, we can still extract that file and maybe do some sandbox analysis. And so if we move these quarantine files to a, a common directory that may be the same across all of our endpoints on our infrastructure, we can then access those quarantine files and maybe run them in a sandbox and we can really pinpoint okay which servers has have these malicious files on them and then we can react accordingly which is really nice so if we let me see if i still have that directory yeah i do so let's kill the so let's kill the process again and instead of the remove flag we will use the we will use the move flag so what we'll go ahead and say move and we'll say to slash temp slash malicious and so we start that up and we let's now extract this guy again and the password is infected we should see Clam AV trigger on it. We should see that the file has been moved, so it's no longer here. And if we CD into temp and CD into malicious, we see that it has added the file here for us. And now we will also see our wazoo alert. So we refresh this guy, we see our wazoo alert. So we get our wazoo alert here, and then uh, you know, if we're on the security team, we know, okay, and we have all of our endpoints set up to move malicious files to this quarantined directory. And again, a nice little, little rule, a uh, nice little rule of thumb is to make that quarantine direct directory owned by only the root user. So that, you know, if someone, if someone executes some type of payload and they're able to get a shell onto your box, but they're not uh, within your environment, but they're not the root user, you know, once we remove, once we move this their malicious file into a directory only that can only be accessed by the root user, uh, that in a sense is preventing them from actually executing the file that they're trying to that they're actually trying to to execute. And then alerts our team immediately and says, "Hey, there's there's some bad activity going on on this box." You know, we've in this. And this is really, Clam AV is really good to add to our security stack because unlike, you know, a few previous videos back where we deployed 
an active response capability that you know calls uh, that sends the hash of a file to virus total gets the response back and then if virus total says it's malicious then we auto remove the file now we're circumventing that step right because during that time while our wazoo manager is making the call out to virus total to inspect it you know that that just gives the attacker time to already execute the malicious software the malicious file before we even have a chance to auto remove it where here now with clam av and it's capabilities of doing the on access scanning and that happening at the kernel level so at a very very low level we can now proactively protect our endpoints from malware and is a really nice feature to add on so again a quick and easy video most of this is already set up by default which is nice um, but there were a few tricks, especially with the with the decoder. If you need to change that name, just uh, that can sometimes hang some people up. So make sure you do that. Uh, and other than that, everything should pretty much work out of the box. I will stop it there, and I appreciate you guys hanging out with me, and I will see you in the next one.